Hi, this is Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor with another Luminar AI news update. It's May 27th, and today Skylum has released Luminar AI Update 3, which brings you new benefits for the AI powered photo editing tool. The much anticipated Boca AI is still coming soon, but Skylum has been listening to user suggestions for the Sky AI tool, among some others, and they've made some great improvements based on that feedback. There's three major areas that we're going to be looking at today. A quick summary is some improvements to the Sky AI tool, including horizon placement, sky detection, and better relighting. The augmented sky also now has previews available and folders for you to put your custom items into, as does the Sky AI. I'll show you both of those. The dodge and burn tool now has a softness slider so you can adjust the edge of the brush. And finally, Luminar AI now supports Apple M1 computers fully, as well as iPhone images in the HEIC file format. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's dig in and take a closer look at what's new inside Luminar AI. The first thing you need to do is look for your update. When you first open Luminar AI, it may pop up and tell you that there's an update. If it doesn't, just go to the Luminar AI menu and choose check for updates if you are on Mac. And as you can see, the update is there. Just install and continue. If you are on Windows, you're going to look under the same menu, but then it's going to be under help, check for updates. Once you get the update installed, make sure to install your plugins again as well. Under the same menu, you'll find install plugins. Just simply uninstall them. It may ask for your password. And then reinstall them again, just by clicking the buttons. Very simple and straightforward process. Then when you launch Photoshop or Lightroom, the new version will be installed as a plugin automatically. If you need assistance with Luminar AI at any time, please comment on any of my videos and ask a question and I'll try to help you out. If you want access to the manual, it's available on the Skylum website. I'll provide a link directly to the manual in the description below. You can also download it as a PDF to your computer. One of the major critiques and flaws that people had found in the Luminar AI Sky AI tool was the placement of the reflection, that it wasn't matching the sky accurately. So they've made some improvements on that. Let me show you what they've added. There's now a new section if you open up the Sky AI tool. If you've used the reflections, you'll notice that the reflection amount now also offers water blur, so you can soften the reflection with a bit more of a blur, right? So if you have moving water, for example, or ripples. And there is now a horizon position section. So what that allows you to do, and I've already done for this image, let me show you the before. So this was a plain blue sky image, and I wanted to spark it up a little bit with some nice fluffy clouds. So I added the clouds and I'm just going to set these back to default to show you what happened when I added them. So when I added the clouds, originally the sky was placed where Luminar AI thought the horizon is. Now this is a tricky one because there's horizon here and then there's also reflection, but there's this land bit in between. So it got a little bit fooled. So what I suggest doing is turn the horizon blending to zero and then move the shift slider. So what shift does is it actually sets the horizon point. Okay, now if I move it way up, you can see that it's above the horizon now. So I'm gonna just move it back down a little bit at a time until I get to the real horizon position. Okay, so about there. Now you can see that I'm at plus 54. So the original placement that the program had was down below here, somewhere in the middle of this land area. So once I put the blending back to default, just double click it at 50, now I have a more realistic placement of that horizon. Okay. The next thing I can do is actually move the sky up and down. And you'll notice that when I do that, when I move it down, the reflection moves the same but the opposite, okay, as you would expect. And that was a flaw that was in update two. When you moved the sky up, the reflection moved up and it should move down. 
So what I've done is I've just played with moving it down a little bit so this cloud is over top the buildings and then I want to shift my horizon again. Um, kind of just playing with this so I'm going to bring it back down a little bit more so I've got the same look with the buildings here and I'm able to shift these things back and forth to get the placement to look a bit more realistic. That looks pretty good. Keep in mind that your positioning relative to the horizon and the scene may not make a perfect reflection, meaning that where the clouds appear over the building may not be true in the reflection. Okay, so Luminar AI does a, a best, the best job that it can to try and figure out where the horizon is and where the reflection should go, but now it gives you the tools to be able to move those around to, your, to suit the image closer. I've also used Relight Strength. I can turn the reflection up a bit more as well. I can use Relight Strength to adjust the tonal, tonality and color of the image to match the new sky a little bit better. And I can also use Reflection to give it more reflection if the water is really still or less reflection if it's darker or blurred. So you have total flexibility in how you can adjust your reflection. If I choose another image, let's look at one in my collection of DPM Sky Pack. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well if you want to check it out. So now I've got the same placement of the sky. I'm just going to flip it the opposite direction. And I want to find one that's got a nice sort of sunset because there's nice light on the building here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I think I'm just going to move the sky, the horizon down a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, now you'll see that it totally changes the look of the image. I can give it a bit more warmth as a sunset, darken it down. And because I have the relight strength turned up high, whatever I do to the sky, it's going to apply to the rest of the image. So it gives it a nice unified look. When I replace the sky, the image with it matches. So they've done a good job on updating. One other thing that I was really excited to see was that you can now place your new sky packs if you're purchasing them or making your own into folders because the last update you saw all of them in one big, big sort of list and you had to scroll through them all. Now, if you have different sets that you've gotten from Luminar or from Skylam or purchased somewhere else, like my sky pack or this one that I have from Matt Zeus, you can actually place them into a folder. So if I just click show custom skies at the bottom, it will open up the folder where they live. So if I add a new folder, let's just do a test here. I'm just going to call it practice. And I don't have any skies in there, so I'm just going to copy one in there just so we know there's one in there. Now when I go back to Luminar, I should see the practice guy on the pull down list. There it is right there. They're sorted alphabetically. And there's the one that I copied and pasted into that folder. So folders and previews for the skies is really helpful. As well, they've done the same with the augmented sky. Now you have previews, which is fabulous. So before you just had a list of the things that you could choose like birds, birds one, birds two, etc. Now you can actually see them and place something like a rainbow or a fly or, a, or an airplane into your sky and get a preview. Likewise, you have the option of adding custom sky objects. I don't have any, but if I had any, they would go into this folder and they would appear in Luminar AI as an option. This is a stock image that I downloaded from Pixabay just to practice with because it has a nice reflection on the sand. So the original has a plain sky and I wanted to add something that was more dramatic. So I chose from my sky replacement pack. That's the DPM pack number one. And I placed it. Again, I'm going to just quickly reset these shifts that I've done to blend it in a little better and show you how I made this one work. 
So remember, check the horizon position. And in this case, what I noticed was that because uh, the shot was taken sort of at an angle to the horizon, the sky didn't line up quite right. So by rotating it about three degrees and then putting it back down where it's supposed to be, it now matches up better. So a quick little rotate of this guy worked well to fit it to the original image. This time when we're using the Relight sliders, I've pulled all three, including Relight Human because we have a person in the picture. So that's without the Relight sliders. And when we bring them up, you'll see that it starts to match the reflection a little better and it starts to match the person. Right? Because it knows that this light is back here, she's now more of a silhouette than she was originally. Remember, we can also defocus the sky or blur the water a little bit more to make it look a little bit more realistic because it wouldn't be so sharp on the sand. It's another image that I took in Eastern Canada and I was playing around with a sky replacement here and did something pretty cool. There was kind of a interesting boat along the shore and I made it into a stormy sky. But I wanna bring the boat out a little more. So let's take a look at the changes in that dodge and burn tool. So the dodge and burn tool is down at the bottom under professional. And now if you choose lighten or darken, you'll see that there is now a softness slider. And so I'm gonna make the brush larger just so you can see it. Right? Hopefully you can see the circles. And as I change this softness slider, the circles come closer together like that as I have less softness or further apart. Okay, so what softness does, I'm just gonna do darken for a moment and I'm gonna go full strength. So if I paint or burn in this case, which is darken with a brush which has no softness or little softness, the edge is hard, you're gonna get a firm outline a definite outline on the brush stroke. If you use a brush which is soft, you'll get something like that that's more faded. So when you are using the dodge and burn tool, I always recommend using your strength below 20 and keep the softness quite high. I'm usually over 70% or so. Now I just wanna bring a little bit of detail into this boat. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts, the square bracket keys left and right to make it uh, make the overall brush smaller or larger. So I'm painting with 14% strength and I'm just going to lighten up the edges of this boat a little bit and that you can see the name. It actually says SS Minnow. So no, I didn't take a ride with the skipper <laughs> and end up on Gilligan's Island, but we did find a boat that looked like it. Okay, if I want to bring out anything else in the foreground, uh, maybe some of these rocks here a little bit. And remember, I'm keeping the brush at a low opacity, like 14%, so that as I go, it's very subtle, right? Maybe this moss on the, on the shore here, or maybe I wanna bring out a little bit of these trees here on this island. Whatever I'm doing, okay, I'm going to apply it. And you also have the overall slider so that if you've dodged or burned and then you're not happy with it, you can actually just dial it down a little bit as opposed to erasing it and doing it again. So that's what I'm going to do here and then close the tool and call it a day. As I mentioned, there's also Apple M1 support. Luminar AI now runs on Apple's next generation M1 machines. With the native M1 support in update three, Mac users can take full advantage of the faster processing of the Apple M1 chips. For the HEIC support, Update 3 also adds support for that image format so Windows users can now open and edit photos taken on an iPhone or iOS devices. So overall, Luminar AI is already a fantastic photo editing tool and a few little tweaks and things make all the difference when building a better workflow. Skylum is dedicated to improving their tools and their product for a better experience for you when you're editing your photos. Stay tuned and if there are any additional updates to Luminar AI, I will have them here for you on this channel. Make sure that you have subscribed. If you want to jump right in and learn how to use Sky AI tools, there's a video for you here. Thanks for watching. 
Remember to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends.